Cappuccino the breeze in, man. Hey, man, I had to go way up north, man. I had to go on up north, man. North, north. Cali, man. They go snatch my young ninja, man. Well, he's an older guy now, veteran, but still my young ninja. JT Fizzigger, the oh, bigger oh, figure, man. man, is in the building. I oh, got man. him on the red car, Tommy. Oh, red it's a pleasure, man. man. Hey, we got over dub in the game, man. This hip hop, man, world, man. Yes, me and this young man right here, homie. Yes, and hey, I had to bring y'all something special today, man. Yes, I sir. got JT in the building, man. Hey, man. we're going to spit some of this game for y'all. We live on YouTube right now, man. I'm only going to give y'all about 10, 15 minutes, YouTube. So y'all better suck up the game right now while y'all can, man. Come better on. suck it up. I got JT in the house, man. Hey, it's your favorite host, Bonnie Hunter BJ, CEO Nino Cappuccino, the breeze in, man. Go push that like, share, subscribe button. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Hey, man. JT and Bunny Hunter, BJ, CEO Nino Cappuccino, two bosses. Hey, man, they finna spit that dialogue. They gonna make it rain for us. And it's sunny outside right now. So you better go get your damn umbrella, man, because we about to make it rain, man. We got two of the sidekicks over here in the building, too, man. Two more of the homies over here sitting on the side, man. Hey, man, it's live in the penthouse right now, man. Don't you wish you were sitting right here with us, man? That's all right. You at home watching or at work, wherever you at, man, stay tuned in, man. We right at you right now, man. Hey, man, JT, what's up, homie? How you been? Man, boy, I've been good. From man. Africa? Yes, sir. Back man. to the soils? Back to the soils, you know. Uh, it feel good to be home. You know, I've been, you know, traveling, man. To, to do that traveling thing, you got to have a certain type of something inside you to make you want to be there. Why? Because the struggle is real, you know. Uh, it makes me appreciate what we got over here, most definitely. Sorry, I'm so sorry, keep, keep talking. Keep yeah, talking. you know, um, so coming back to America right now and seeing the way things are, it's like a new America because I haven't never saw this many people going through it financially in terms of like sleeping on the streets and like how so many people in California had these tents all over the place. It's like, this is a weird, a real option of the way to live right now. Like if you don't have a house and you can get your hands on a tent and you setting up shop, people setting up tents with couches and everything. Wow. <coughs> they setting up TVs, they got generators, they got electric skillets, cooking wow. meals. So, you know, um, just coming back, you know, it definitely make me want to get on my grind even harder and and pursue uh the avenues of different uh financial uh, opportunities based on having a product you know it, it moved from me to just doing music or movies but now i'm into software you know the trap flicks that app is available on all platforms to download um it showcased the films that i made but we updating the app now and that's the part that I'm really excited about because you have to start somewhere first. Right, right, right. And then sometimes you got to double back. You got to double back with something a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And don't fool yourself and be pushing a product uh, too long. That is not actually good. You know, you can have something, but you might have to revamp. Mm -hmm. So as a as a as a as a good businessman, I like my product that I have out right now. Trap Licks. It's free, y'all. Download it. Google Play Store, iPhone, Android, the uh, uh, iOS Store. When you see that, you go say, "Okay, the guy, he, he, I can see an E for effort. You know, it's a, it's an E for effort. You know, and um, based upon my effort, it give, it give me an opportunity. You know what I mean? It give me an opportunity to actually, you know, rebuild it." So it could be uh, more competitive in this marketplace. So I know a lot of people don't know what that means, but that just means better buttons, better functionality, easier to register, you know, um, 
you can share the video. Uh, you can add your own YouTube links inside the app now. Wow. So you you just jump right into the software on me. So we pause that because we're going to go back to that because, you know, we're going to get okay, deep. Okay, come on. We're going to get deep on them. Right now, man, hey, man, you tapped in. You tuned in, man, to ROE, man. Rules of engagement, man. 24-14, man. I got JT, bigger figure in the building right now, man. Sitting on the red couch with me, man. Your favorite host, Funny Hunter BJ, man. CEO Nino Cappuccino, the breeze in, man. Hey, look. Before we get started, JT, we're going to give the people about 10 minutes commentation of our opinions. I've already went in myself on two lives on the Keefe D situation and then voiced my opinion based on uh, Puffy. Feel me? Oh, fruity to that, man. So I want to hit you and ask you your opinion, your personal opinion as a professional, you feel me? Engineer slash producer slash film producer, creator, writer, artist, boss. See, we've been wearing the same damn hats. We we didn't sit down. I remember sitting down telling your ass, man, out of frustration. We both in the 90s, 97, 98. Feel me? When you first venture down into watch, mm -hmm. tell you, man, look, man, you got to start locking that shit down on paper. So, therefore, you can utilize it for your own benefit. Because yes. right now, they're going to keep giving you free footage because they know you can't use it. You feel what I'm saying? You got to clear, got to get the clear. Got to get the clearance, baby. Yeah. So, man, listen, what's your opinion on today's hottest YouTube topic right now that's going on, man? This fool getting himself arrested with his own testimony. And then I want to ask you a question about them asking, well, should testify? And he already said that he wouldn't testify. So what's your opinion on that whole just theory as a hip-hop artist and being on the inside, not a consumer on the outside. So you know certain things like I do. Yeah. Um, when I see this situation right here, you know, this this knowledge was already known. Like, I've heard this over and over. Um, I never heard his name. I heard his nephew name, Orlando. That's the name I always heard. Um, seeing what he now, after this happens, and seeing what he said now, because I never watched them interviews, but to see what he said, you know, they just picking the, the part where he said specific stuff. That, to me, I thought, I said, this could be an absolute lie to just boost himself up. That's what I'm thinking, like. It's like a, a bad joke that turned out bad, or it's like almost saying something that Possibly, like that's just no. There's that's no. great. Pause, pause for a second, because you ordered something that, and that's crazy you say that because when I did my commentary on it, I specifically said that why would you take a reputation that you already stand on as a known Compton Crip with rank and a major D boy from Compton, right? You have a name. Why would you take that ranking when they came to you from the very beginning for an indictment for? major birds and guns that they had got from me from his house originally a decade ago. So instead of him just saying, man, fuck it, man, give me the 15 of the dub. Because we know on the West Coast how our laws are and how the jurisdiction system is. So therefore, if they have certain leverage on us, they allow a nigga to win a deal and plead out and cop out say, man, fuck it, yeah, this, this, this is mine, man. Give me the dub. And you go lay your ass down for 20 years, nigga, and come home at 60, 61 right now where you free as supposed to. You finna take your ass in now and ain't never coming home if you make it out. Because mm. remember, you're supposed to have cancer last time when they caught your ass. He finna get an Oscar this time around. Because mm. he go, I'm sure he finna go in and, and play half dead. Feel me? Mm -hmm. So my, my thing was, just like you said, I said, why would you sit there and even fake or put yourself in that position if you really didn't do that and pull the trigger or you know you didn't conspire, then why make up that story if you did make it up? That made no damn sense. This is the part, though. If you watch the videos, he's saying it on his own. Yeah. So either he got paid to say it. Like, you feel me? Because it's like this crazy. It's crazy, from especially for me. Like you say, I'm, I'm within the industry. I've, I have access to things that I've heard and seen and to see this though definitely the most craziest thing I ever saw unless unless it's it's good unless it was for the money is genius 
if it's for the clout to boost it up, to sell the book or something, because I heard he wrote a book and said right, the same thing, that. right? No, this 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 the book is different. Is the book different from what he said? On tape? No, it's all, uh, basically all in details. So the book had the same words. All in details. So now, if you wasn't the guy who had nothing to do with that, mm -hmm. and you felt like right now the people who did do it, they did, but I could tell my version of it to boost the story. Story and Annie up myself as already I'm a known situation. Yeah, so, so it's almost like who could tell on him because he could say, "Man, this is for my book. This now, is for my new movie coming out." Now here's the twist to that. A lot of what's said and what he's talking about does have factors and truth to it. If you go back into the internal investigation of, because you got to go back to Gene Deal. He's all over in there for the last three years, and everything he says coincides with what this nigga is saying and the situation because Puffy through the ass was connected to Southside, homie. See, it's a history behind this shit. It goes deeper, deeper than what it is. So this is why his ass is shivering because there was really, really a connection there between him and them. Mm -hmm. So he revealed that out of anger, and they supposedly owed him. So this is all on tape. This ain't something I'm making up. Or I'm talking about it. And so it's all put in the puppy public. name way back then. Puppy name. Man, listen, it's all on the puppy. When, when you get through, you use a damn research. You know how you do. Put it up. They got puppy right now. They got that nigga on recording, talking about him and another cat from New York, NY, which all these dudes is gonna be implicated when they. It's gonna be. A, it's gonna be a domino effect. Trust and believe me when I tell you that. But is it gonna have to be? Is it gonna have to come? Is it gonna like? Is it is, is it gonna be because of what he said? The boy Keefe. Every said, goddamn thing because of what he said. But and then he went on Keefe every and platform and, and repeated it. it over and, and over. over in same detail. story. Never changed it. Over and over in is detail. It in the book? And like this. It's in the book. Though? Look, homie, Vlad. Huh? Oh, you talking about the time? Oh yeah. Uh, well, see. I told him, but that old pussy nigga didn't want to go. I told him to get out the car. He's the buster anyway. He's the buster. This how the nigga we actually talking. You feel me? So you, it's it's it don't have nothing to do with none of us, the public, nobody. This one individual nigga, as as an OG as you are, and you supposed to know better. You what you did was you turned around. These individuals in the system played you like a fucking chessboard. Made you crack. They took all your OG ranking from you 15 years ago when your ass didn't take that deal and want to deal with him and go lay your ass down. They took all your ranking from you. So Keefe D became nothing no more. And the streets knew that. Took the ranking. Bro, when you turn around and you go in the system and you cop out as far as working with them, it's the difference between pleading. I tell a motherfucker, yeah, that's, the, that's my dope. That's my pistol. Give me my dub, man. They say, all right, well, we accept your plea with 21 years. All right, man, fuck it. Come on, I'm gone, man. Send me on, man, I'm gone. That's my plea. I copped out on my own recondence. I ain't telling nobody no nothing. That's my own plea. Yeah. But flip it. Hey, if you got something to give us now and you can give us something, we'll give you something back, which is immunity. But his dumb ass wasn't smart enough to know. Immunity didn't mean you got full immunity, meaning you can start bragging that you did it. Yeah, this is what he did. Give us some. Instead of him making up another lie on somebody else and 10 bucks two then, nigga. You went and threw your nephew under the bus first, and that opened up the Pandora's door. Wait, wait hold on. You said Lando did what? Yeah, my nephew killed Pop. And that's where it all started. But how you how you know that? Because I was there. I was in the back seat of the car. Mm. And it all started from right there. And smart, as smart as they is, they let the tape recorder roll, put the contract paperwork out there, say, this is your do's and your don'ts. Do you agree? Yeah, man, come on, let's go. Let's roll with this. At this time, he supposedly had cancer. So he dealed, he willed and dealed out. And, and he agreed. messed around and lived. And he kept living. Yeah, so he agreed with him. So in that contract, you had clauses. So and what he did. Living, we get to put you back in. The, you so know. what his jackass did was came back to the public now, thinking he was Mr. Untouchable. And that motherfucker got on every platform that was major. It confessed, yeah, nigga, we killed pop, bragging about it now. 
feel me? Wow. Bragging and boasting about it, right? So in, in the mix of him bragging and boasting about it, they they done it. He don't know he incriminated himself to murder because we didn't give you immunity to no Tupac murder. We only gave you immunity to tell us what you gave us that it was your nephew. And we gave you immunity behind them drugs that, that you played out. So that was the deal we did with you, the case we had you on. That's what we gave you immunity on. Now you go on national TV and you make a mockery of us. We come to get your dog ass, man. Hey, man, you tapped in, you tuned in right now, man. The ROE, man, Rules of Engagement, man. It's your favorite host, Bunny Hunter BJ, CEO Nino Cappuccino, man. I got JT Bigger Figure on the couch, man. JT kind of little, little stung and lost a little bit on little bits and pieces of what's going on. But it gets deep. But trust and believe me, his ass going to go find out. You feel me? Yes, sir. And that's what he do, man. Yes, but sir. yeah, man, so he uh basically confessed to the murder, like, He's a conspiracy, and in, in conspiracy in the criminal world now, conspiracy is the worst. I might as well, I'd rather be the trigger man because conspiracy, nigga, you the shot caller, you the leader, you the nigga to put the all, you the mastermind. You made this happen. Yeah, and you was way over there, 10 bucks too. Nah, it don't matter, tough. but you put yourself in the back seat, conspiracy. You in the back seat, conspiracy. That's even more, more grimy. Yeah, you at the scene. You, feel me? you in the back seat, folks. Now, watch this though. Yeah, and you talking about. The niggas who don't want to do what and what and but you clown. But watch this. Watch this. What came first, interviews or the book? The interviews. Okay, watch this. What if it was a significant amount of money to say to say all this shit and I got paid to say it? I'm just thinking the I'm thinking nigga, left you, field. I'm thinking left field. Think, we will make think left. It ain't that thing of left to it, homie. Listen. A hundred bands. Hold on. Tell them you did it, goddamn. You was in the car for a hundred. You know what type of ratings that's gonna be? Nigga, do you know one of them blogger niggas that give somebody 50 or 100 bands True. to talk about something, boy? True to all and that's that. A, and that's well, like breaking the internet. What who about the, the consequences? What about the consequences? The hundred bands to the nigga right now who probably feel like the hundred bands I needed. How many niggas throw their life away for 10 bands? So I'm just thinking 100 bands cash. Oh. I need you to say, God damn it, you was in that car. Because I'm thinking it's probably some shit like that, bro. No, that, you, that man wasn't in that car. You got to understand. You ain't a, no way. Listen, listen, he could prove it. Like, bro, you, I got paid to listen, say this. No, 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 no. You're missing the point. You missed the whole point. There was a white Cadillac. There was four Crips and a white Cadillac. During the whole duration of this night. Now, whether that white Cadillac was on the strip and did the actual pop, 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 we all have to find out through this case. But from the theory of it, them niggas was in Vegas in a white Cadillac, homie. And he was in the and he was in the and car. that's why he was able to describe that car, because that was they actually in the car. They drove home from Compton to Las Vegas in this particular car. That's why he was able to describe it to a T. Oh. So he took that story and he ran with it. He didn't have to tell them folks that shit. He didn't have to say shit about that say, story. He didn't have to say. So it ain't so that the feds didn't pay him no hundred thousand. So let's get this understood. The I'm inter- talking about Vlad. One of them. He didn't pay him nothing to make him Vlad. say or, or you tell don't us think about. Vlad you. didn't pay no, no, bro. Listen, what I'm saying. Fifty bands or something. Nothing to say. You got you how, the car with you got. Think about it. Why should he? And why have to? Why have he? Why should he have to pay him 50 bands unless he negotiate that now? I'm not discrediting that from you. Because I heard that's what B Ladder cash you out. Yeah, but now listen, Ladder's smart. Watch this. How you think he called him in to interview him? Because he studied the whole situation and he knew that boy violated and he knew he violated his immunity. So I'm going to get him on my station first. For the 50 bands. The and he got bands. It, nigga. When he went on VLAD, Oh, band dude, play. Dude, you listen, I guarantee you. I'm thinking if they sit in the investigation room right now looking at bands. the camera footage, I'm thinking the bands. top footage they look at. They're gonna look at VLAD first and then the other two tops. They ain't tripping about the other ones he trickled down on. They going straight to VLAD and look at his man. Because this shit is gonna be chopped all up down precise and professional wordings mm. and everything. It's gonna be coded. Everything. Feel me? And that synopsis is going to be right there, right there. This is typing her ass off. When they finish, transcript, boom. You know what I'm saying? 
Hey, man, you tapped in, you tuned in, man. ROE, man, rules of engagement, man. Hey, YouTube Live, we about to pop off right now, man. I had to come on right quick and give y'all a little something, man. CJT's opinion, man, about the situation. Yes, but sir. I don't know what this nigga made this nigga think. Uh, <laughs> he, he, I don't know. He, he looking for a way out for the nigga talking about man. Well, maybe they paid him a hundred bands. I'm thinking they paid some racks for that live right there. That's got to be a lie. But what about his pride, JT? It's pride, man. Damn, man. This shit's so crazy because the internet world for money, uh, it's a lot of shit that can happen for money. <laughs> that you would be like, no way. Imagine niggas getting paid to go gay. Imagine getting two million cash. I need you to be a gay, and we got a deal, but it's the only deal we got. We don't got no more straight deals. But wow, a hey, little man. Nas X deal. What if they for two million cash to a nigga? Because Lil Nas X looked like he could have, like girls could have probably liked him. But he said he liked boys. But I'm saying two million cash. And you gonna, we going to make you a mega star, nigga. That nigga switched from a regular person. Right here, man. For $2 million. Raw. Dollars, Raw. Uncut. Right here, man. For the people, by the people, to the people. And you know what? I'm in 1,000% agreement with it. Because you know what, JT? For money. You already know that's what's going on in the hip-hop era now. You know they done took our younger, younger generation and flipped them. Why you think all these little ugly-ass girls getting signed on right now? Bony as hell. Ain't only wear 100 pounds. Feel me? These hoes only wear 100 pounds getting signed on. To miss God, our young daughters, their nieces, it's, it's, grandbabies, and everything. And um, now that's definitely that's not finna stop no time soon now. It's because people like, well, shit, if sexy red weak ass, even though she sound good now, but at first she sounded weak, but now it sound good. Why? They played it over and over, and now they put the money behind it. And I can hear it, and I can say, okay, she got, she got some, she got. You feel me? Same thing, Cardi B. I nigga, thought you she was. A, hold on, hold no, on. I'm saying, I'm hold on, on, hold on. Nigga. I'm talking about hold how they finesse. Sitting on my red couch, nigga, and you my YG, nigga. You bet not in the world, and you a producer, and you got an ear for music. Hold you bet not in the world, say, and now the music chart is sounding good. No, she I'm talking, talking about, about this nigga about, her ass and sucking on some balls and, and some cum. I'm talking about. You said the words though. Pay. That's one. Yeah. Program. It's on a lot. Okay. It's acceptable. Oh, let know. I, okay, I see what you, you feel me. Like yeah, once, yeah. once, I, once we seen her look a little fresher, and she was, you know, drinking them, and goddamn it, the song I heard, I'm keep hearing it over. Oh, well, because they put it out here, like you just said, program. It programmed to the point where it's acceptable. To the point where even if I could laugh at it, I'm like, this her style. It's comical. It's hood wretched prostitute. All the shit, like the, the first open openly prostitute rapper. Her shit is prostitute wow. all the way. Wait, all the way. Little Kim never said she was. What about the other little chunky chick too? Uh, it's, it's a few of them like that. But I'm it. saying, Glorilla. I haven't heard her say she's selling pussy. She. No, I'm talking about selling it. I'm talking about she. They talking about getting money for you fucking right. But I'm about. talking about she said I'm a hoe. I'm a prostitute. Like I didn't hear. It. Those words, sexy red, the first one talking about. I'm a prostitute. I'm a hoe. Right, right. No, it's a trend up now, though. It's a trend. It's, on and then some other ones say they it. some hoes too. They talking about a lot of, and they coming, up, and right? they coming for your man, ladies. <laughs> the, the crazy part about it, I think, all this lane, I, to all the women out there, all the females, oh, right? Man. This is the crazy part about this: is how can you sit here and follow a demonic female who's programmed to program you? To what she's told to tell you, how can you follow the shit? But at her at her cost is her soul and his soul. And at the end of the day, they benefit. They tell you, fuck a nigga, fuck your man, swallow his balls, but fuck a nigga. <laughs> but she go home to her husband and she be fucking around at that nigga put two babies in her. And guess what? The nigga she married ain't shit. He ain't no baller. He ain't no nigga was in the business. He was a nigga that was in the right place at the right time. And he knocked her ass. Oh, he was already in her life before she came up. How about that? Ain't that some shit, TV land? Hey, man, you tapped in. You tuned in all week, man. On this YouTube, y'all, we, we finna close y'all out right now, man, because we going in now on exclusive on the interview, man. But we had to give y'all a little something, man. And I had to come on, man, and speak about the hot topic that's going on, man. So in closing, man, JT, man, right quick. Out there in live, man, live field, man. What is your opinion? About it, like you just said, it ain't gonna stop. So, what is your opinion to the newbies that's coming in the game, male and females? Right quick, man, 
to that camp. I would say, man, you got to stand on what you believe, as 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 you already know. But understand, you got to look at where you're trying to go, because that's not where you prop. That's not where you at right now. Where you trying to go is not where you at. So you got to think about who do you want to be when you get to where you're trying to go. Because whatever you start with right now, that's what we're going to remember you by. <laughs> so it's going to be hard to switch, you know, images uh, and just unless you're just a, a talented person like that. But uh, get your best and stay independent. When I say stay independent, that don't mean don't get a manager, an agent, a lawyer. That don't mean don't sign with a big record label. Stay independent means you understand every aspect of who you are and what aspects of you that's about to be getting monetized. Independent is knowing your terms and conditions of any contract that you're about to enter into. Stay independent is being aware of your options because if them if that knowledge is not present for you and someone else holds it, you don't know if they're going to push the best line for your options. So if staying independent is understanding your agreement with each and every person you're working with. And then also invest in yourself. Because even if you have a label that can pay for your record label and pay for your album or pay for your movie, you can actually have a deal with somebody, but spend your money to make a new project and then present it to your company. And now we can talk about bigger budgets and bigger finance. And those are the words of the day. Man, great words of the day. Because what he just said right there, basically, independently is now as an artist, you're not only an artist, now you become a businessman. You become a subsidiary of your company. And it's subsidiary meaning now you put yourself in partnership mode. Like, okay, well, shit. Hey, check this out, CEO. Uh, I got 25, man. I mean, I got 25K. Can I match 25K with 25K of the budget? Now I got a 50K budget. Now that gives you points. It, it, you, you can you can split your terms now as far as your deal. You can set your deal up and your terms for different levels, man. So this is what JT was just talking about as far as that gift of gab, man. Hey, man, you've been tuned in. You tapped in right here on this live, man, to ROE, man, Rules of Engagement, man. Hey, we about to jump up out of here right quick, but y'all already know my saying, man, that mighty W, W-A-T-T-S, man. Watts, we always talk to survive. Black, be back at ya. Don't close that one Yeah, man. Hey, ROE, man, is in the building, man. It's your favorite host, Bonnie Hunter, BJ, man, back on that main camera, man. Yes, sir, man. We back. Hey, got JT sitting on the couch, man. We going to the beginning right now, man. Make sure you uh post it. Hit that blue button check so we don't lose it. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Take take that one off. Good. Yeah, no, just take it off. I'm trying to put it back up on y'all got. And then live, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. Oh. So, yeah, man, so we back. So, we started from the beginning, man. When I bring my guests in and I talk to my guests, and to TV land, a lot of the people out there in TV land are really not familiar. So, they don't have familiarity who a lot of people may be. Like, you have your own channels. You're all over the place. But then it's a lot of people who may be tuned in on my side who not tuned in just yet, but they're going to be tuned in today. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to the beginning. Who is JT Bigger Figure? Where was he descended? Where did he come from? Where did it all start for him? JT the Bigger Figure started in San Francisco, Filmo District. That's the western side of San Francisco. Um, growing up, being exposed to the music, through Mama Pearl, my, that's my mama. She would always play music uh, and playing that music. It was always the funk. It was always the classics. It's the, you know, all our parents, we all, all of us grew up on on, on them um, iconic people. But the music production was always something that stood out to me, like how the beat sound, the music side of it. Uh, what was your age range back back then? Man? My age, my age. Well, enjoying the music, I could really just go back, shit, to, to a kid, man. But I could say, let's just say, 
for me analyzing it 10 years old i'm 10 years more. old yeah 10 years old i'm paying attention okay so at 10 where were you born where were you I born, born in san you francisco I, I was born in san francisco uh fillmore district 1973 old school shit about to be 50 now fillmore district Baby, yeah, still yeah. Old, man. I'm a, a hip-hop baby. When when hip-hop was born, I was born. Man, a lot of real players and gangsters come up out of Fillmore, too, man. And I don't yeah. mean gangbangers. I mean real gangsters. Structured, organized type yeah. shit. Gangsters, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Fillmore at, at 8, 9, 10 years old at that time in the 70s, uh, we're talking about the heroin trade. You That's know, the 83. Kid. 83, I was 10. Okay, okay, we're in the eighties. Okay, okay. Yeah, we were born in the seventies, my bad. Yeah, eighties. So now you're getting the ear and the knack for music because mom's just playing music around the house, like a yes. lot of our parents did when we grew up. Yeah, all the man, it, the beauty about us coming up, bro, and the difference between the day, ain't that something that we literally used to wake up on the weekends and you can hear that blues, them oldies, that James Brown, you hear that shit playing, and that and guess what it was. That was all our damn cue. Get that ass up. It's time to clean, clean up. up. It's chore time. Nah, and that's GG, you got dishes. Right. Carmen, you know you got the yard. You got trash. Everything, man. Boards. Everything, man. That was growing and up. And you got to get on your knees. All that baseboards. responsibility, man. That's what our parents yep. told us, bro. The window seals. All that. We got to clean that with soap and water. None of that just wiping this shit. None of that, man. None like, of that. For real. And, and, and that's, that's a trip because. Saturday morning, to be specific. To be, man, come to on. To be specific. That was like the roll call. You hear yep. that music Saturday playing music. loud? Oh, it's clean up time. And when you smell that bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas and all that bacon on Saturday. It's time for breakfast. Is get because it's like get up, get cleaned up. We got to clean the house. Whoever in on clothes washing, it's, take the clothes to the wash house. Take the quarters. Here goes some soap, de, soap detergent. That's no, right. the music was was part of that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so we're gonna fast forward from ten to fourteen years old then, because mm -hmm. that's when it actually started as me getting the chance to rap on the microphone. Gotcha. My first time rapping on the microphone, uh, freestyling over some instrumentals of some popular songs back then. We didn't know it's called freestyle, but that's what it was because I didn't rap over the beat with their lyrics. I rapped over the beat where we made up what we was doing in the hood. Mm -hmm. We was trying to copy N.W.A. We had been listening to these guys called N.W.A. And that right there made us be like, oh, yeah. Oh, so that yeah. became your inspiration. Oh, man. That's it. That's it right there. So y'all start kind of like mimicking the cube. We, and mim the we mimicked and it all the way through, but we so said who, it about who, who who were you? I'm 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 assuming you was Drake. Ice Cube. Oh <laughs> okay, I okay. The lyrics, huh? Yeah, because at that time Dr. Dre was doing something that none of us could even fathom doing. That's and that's making a beat. That's why I How put you in the category. Make the boom boom. Like we don't know what this drum machine is. That's what's doing it, or this keyboard got the this sound or maybe he got a drum player or you know um and that go for any production we don't know how michael jackson or prince or none of these dudes because all we could we could just see the studio we see what they right. did it with but, the but to be a rapper is easier yeah and as somebody like if you want to jump in it you're not going to jump in as i'm a producer right 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 that wasn't even popular back then and that's I'm crazy that you say that because as we all start out of something in some field or another, right? When you look at the history and you go back on Dre's history and you look at documentaries that he's been in and when he talks about his history, his historical point was him, DJ Yellow, I know all them niggas, they didn't know none of that shit. All them niggas was DJs under Lonzo's umbrella, mm -hmm. right? Dre and Yellow, Yellow and them niggas used to read out of books and read the shit to Dre while Dre would do the shit hands on while they reading it to him. And you know, he'd be like, what's next? And, they be reading certain shit and he'll be, okay, he'll try this. He just learned hand on like we did certain and when we got practice. Yeah, over and over. So he became the instrumental individual as far as the sound. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And yes. Cube was that damn ink pen, boy. And then Ring stepped in with him. With the but Cube too. was that ink pen. Cube. Cube was the, the forefather of the, of the writing for the man. Team. Come on. And then after that, come along DLC and then uh Ren. Yeah. But Cube was that ink pen, boy. Feel me? Yeah. So now you 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 got your ears glued to the hip hop. You get tuned in, and you you inspired by NWA. You say you jumped on the mic. When was your first 
time you remember going into a studio or a home studio, it don't matter. That was in 88. That was a studio. Who that, spot was it? It was Pier 39. It was, um, it's, it's a place that you can, you know, when you go to these amusement parks and they got the glass window with the seat, you can be a star type of thing. You pay $20 a song, you can go in there and you can do the lyrics to your favorite song. Oh, okay. So they will, they can videotape you or they can put it on cassette tape. I didn't have enough for the video, so I did the cassette tape, and I paid $20 a song. I paid for six songs. Parents Don't Understand, Instrumental, uh, Walk This Way, Rock Like This, LL Cool J, I Need Love. Uh, these, these, the Fresh Prince, uh, Parents Don't Understand. The Fresh Prince, <laughs> God damn it. Parents Don't <laughs> Understand, and, and, and to us, you know, this is shit we see it on TV. Right, right. So right. to see it on TV, now I can rap? You can be a star. That's the first studio I ever went in. Mm. The next studio I went in was in 1990. And that was a home studio with just a, a little drum machine, a little DJ uh, a, a turntable, a little mixer, the microphone, the headphone, and some speakers. And then that was across the street from my house. Mm -hmm. DJ X1, Hue MC. These guys had a house studio. The next time after that is uh, going to a bigger studio, finally now, where I can see the mixing board and the big speakers on the wall. Of course, that, at this at this point in time, that's you're in not the big studio. studio. That's now, not too. Are you clicked up with anybody now? Or are you a part of a crew? Or are you still solo? I'm actually just the beginning stages of me solo. solo. Yeah. Yep. I had a couple of homies I was rapping, rapping with that I let get on my album, but for the most part, it was my pursuit. So, so assuming yeah, at this time you, you're in your teenage years, then right? Yeah, I'm like 17, turning 18, gonna be 19. Yep.